What's up, everyone? We're back for another story time. And as requested, it's another bad dating story because I have a ton, a lot. This one we're going to call Swimmer, okay? So I'm 25. I just moved out to Phoenix, Arizona, where I was working at the then Fox Sports Arizona, now Valley Sports Arizona. And I was living my best life. I had never moved anywhere outside of Nashville, Knoxville, in the state of Tennessee, and this was across country. So I was having so much fun. I got on dating apps for the first time. I was dabbling with Hinge and Bumble and all of the above, just trying to, you know, put myself out there, be an adult, meet people, make myself uncomfortable. Well, I match with this dude who's a swimmer. What that entails is a lot of traveling, a lot of swimming, and a lot of just training. It was 2019, so it was around the time of the Olympic trials were starting up. There were a lot of tournaments, qualifying races, all of the above. I meet this guy and he's really nice. We get along really well, both like food, enjoying all of these new restaurants, whatnot. Go on a few dates and truthfully, we really hit it off. We met probably at the beginning of May of 2019 and I had moved there at the end of April. So it was pretty quick after I had moved there that I met this guy. There were a few things that were like a little quirky, like his his taste in music didn't really align with mine. I'm more of pop, R&B, soul, sometimes, you know, jazz, depending. And he was just like the deepest of darkest, like screamo metal. So we'd go from like, I got a pocket full of sunshine by Natasha Bedingfield to. So it was always a little jarring. Nothing wrong with that music, but we probably could have come up with a better playlist of sorts. Beside the point, this guy is the guy who taught me what a red flag is without knowing it's a red flag. Because truthfully, I didn't see anything wrong with the situation. And granted, that's sometimes my worst quality is that I see too much of the good and like miss the bad until after the fact. And I'm like, mm, 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 got it. We are talking, basically dating for May, June, July, and into August. So almost four months. And he would travel and train and do all that. And we'd FaceTime every single night. He wanted me to meet his family. His sister was coming out at the end of August. We were planning this whole trip, like everything. One would think it'd be a normal budding relationship, right? This guy's in some South American country for a qualifying race of some sorts. And he's FaceTiming me every single night. We're making plans, all of just normal stuff, okay? We FaceTimed on, we FaceTimed on a Saturday, which was like mid-August. And then that Sunday, the day after we FaceTimed, we were texting and he was like, hey, what time are you done with work? Want to FaceTime? Like, let me know what works with your work schedule. And I was like, yeah, I totally uh, should be available to talk or FaceTime a little after five. And, and that was the last uh, time I ever talked to him. I never spoke to the dude again. Like when I tell you the last communication I had with him was August 19th of 2019, so serious. He asked me when he wanted to FaceTime and what time I was available. I responded with said time and then I proceeded to never hear from him again. Here's a few things that happened after that. Lots of confusion, obviously. Second was I sent probably a total of two or three texts after that over the next like three or four months. Just, hey, you alive? So I didn't get a response on any of the texts. I even sent a handful of Snapchats here and there just like, trying to joke around or see if we could get some sort of answers. I never came about it in an angry way because people just don't respond to anger well. So I didn't want to be like, ah, nah, 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 nah. I was just like, hey, are you alive? Seems like a reasonable question. There were probably like three, four, maybe five Snapchats that I sent from like August to December. I never got a response on anything. He still follows me on social media 
to this day. Occasionally, we'll like things randomly, like go back a couple years and just like something weirdly, which I'm like, okay. The weirdest part is I was in Arizona from April to October of 2019. And then I transferred to Fox Sports South, which is Bally Sports South, which is in Atlanta, closer to my family, bigger region, all of the above, right? I was working in Atlanta. I have moved on, was talking to someone else. And randomly in like December, January of 2019 or 2020, like the end of that year, beginning of the next, I noticed two things. One, all of my Snapchats were opened like six months post me sending them. Two, he posted on social media that he was training 15 minutes away from my new apartment in Atlanta. He was training and living 15 minutes away. And still to this day, we have never exchanged words, texts, snaps, anything, nothing ever again. August 19th, 2019. So that's why we dubbed him the ghosted swimmer. Because I was ghosted. I don't understand that level of ghosting. Because I get if it's like you've gone on one or two dates and it's just not there and you don't really know this person. So you're like, ah, I'm just going to like fade out, right? Don't agree with it, but I, I get that. I, like, I would be more accepting of that. What I don't get is building this like four month daily communication, talking on the phone, FaceTiming, setting up plans to meet family members, and then just, hey, when can you FaceTime? I should be available at like 5 p.m. Poof, gone. Just like that, just gone. I don't know much about the dude now because I unfollowed him so long ago, but I know he didn't make the Olympics that next year, so karma's a bitch. That's all I got. That's another story time. Thanks for listening. Bye.